mostly because Christianity really does believe that inherently every human being is a sinful piece of shit. And that you have to repent, repent, repent. You do nothing but sin. And of course, it's really easy when anything that's fun is a sin. I mean, even masturbation is a sin. So I must have sinned uh, hundreds of times. Thousands. <laughs> But it's, it's easy to take that perspective and suddenly say, well, you need this religion to make yourself moral. So you knock down people and say, you're nothing and you're a gross human being, corrupt and vile, and say that only through the grace of this 2,000-year-old Jew can you hope to find any everlasting peace and love. It, it seems to deny the fact that, you know, we are kind of amazingly nice most of the time. I mean, look, look at this fact. None of you have come over here and bashed me over the head and... And meanwhile, you could, you could all overwhelm me. You decide, fuck this guy, or rob him, or something like that. The thought, hopefully, has never even entered your mind. Money, that's I don't have any money. No, it's true. Good point, sir. I have no money. But maybe I'm saying something offensive to something. Like so maybe you're like, all right, this guy. I'm going to kill him. But yeah, like we are amazingly nice. I mean, think about another species that could get along with essentially genetic strangers as much as we do. Put a bunch of ferrets together that aren't genetically related into a small room. Watch what fucking happens. It's not a pretty sight. I mean, even chimpanzees that have a lot of empathy, um, they can't they, they they can't exist and and, and get along with people that are, have no genetic relations to them. Oftentimes, they'll they'll kill each other. They'll attack one another. They're very territorial and their their circle is very very small. But our circle is massive. I mean, I'll, I'll be on a metro or I'll be on a bus. I'll be surrounded by nothing but strangers, and I'm not afraid. I am not afraid. I could be out at night, alone, walking down the street, and generally, unless I'm in Cincinnati, I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's kind of an amazing thing that we, that most religious people haven't really taken into account, just how uh, how much empathy we really do have, how nice we are. They seem to focus only on those people who you know, commit, uh, you know, vile acts, but. What percentage is that? It's a relatively small, uh, small part of the population, and yet they do. Re we, we do kind of give them a disproportionate amount of attention. Well, turn on the news. Anytime the news, you'll watch people getting killed. You watch people committing acts of violence. You're like, is the world gone mad? And meanwhile, the statistics show that crime has been going down, more and more down. Violent crime is always going down. Vandalism is on the way up, but I just think that's because people are pissed. <laughs> so we are very, very. Peaceful, and, and we, you know, we often, you often hear this, and I, I'm so sick and tired of this. Where a person says, "Oh, you know, we're the only species that commits acts of genocide. We're the only ones that do war." Have you not seen the Nature Channel? Honestly, <laughs> we are not the only species that do war. We're not the only species that practice genocide. I mean, a simple example of someone practicing genocide is when a new lion takes over a pride. What's the first thing he does? Kills all the young ones. That's a kind of genocide, right here. It's, there's no kindness. This is nature, you know, red tooth and claw. And we don't accept that. We don't like that. I have never heard anyone who's ever studied evolution is like, yeah, we should live like that. It's pretty fucking awesome. Right on. Evolution is the way that we should live our lives. Survival of the fittest. Uh, if you're a psycho, maybe you believe that. But most of us would just think, no, we, we, we don't want to live that way. We, we want to care for one another. We want to create friendships and, 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 and bonds with one another. I mean, think about what we're doing now. We're... We are all meeting together to talk about disbelief, to share our stories, to share our ideas. Holy moly. And that so something that gives us a biological um, a bio, uh, something. Well, it's <laughs> an advantage. Because we stay in group, we feel empathy for people in our group, so have a group that will defend itself against animals or you go hunting in groups and things like that. Well, I would, say, I would say that the most amazing thing about human beings is what I call the triumph of empathy. And I think that if you were to examine why are human beings so successful, and you could say that's ah, because we're smart, it's because we're clever, I actually think it's because of how much empathy we really do have towards one another. How many people felt some kind of sympathy after the quakes, or earthquakes in Haiti? You know, how, how many people feel sympathy for others that starve or are in pain? There's no reason for you to. They don't affect you. But you think about them. You think about them a lot. And, and sometimes it's easy to forget about them because it's true that although we have a lot of empathy, we some, you, know, we, you have to be reminded every once in a while. You know, you, life can kind of distract you and make you forget that you really do care about a lot of people. But you do. Think about how big your surrounding is. Think about all the people that you care about. And then you still care about people outside of that. We even have empathy for creatures that have no relation to us. 
You know, we're not always the best at doing that, and yes, sometimes I enjoy a steak, even though a cow looks pretty nice. Uh, but you know, I just want to pass over the head and eat steak. I can't help it, I'm a meat eater. But there are lots of people that are vegetarians, and I understand why they are. They have, they have empathy. They have a lot of empathy, and I think that's what differentiates us. And I think that that's the most insulting thing about religion, that they have forgotten the triumph of empathy. And this has been entirely a product of evolution. You know, there's an advantage for us to have empathy, and, and, and we're the product of that advantage. If, if we didn't have it and we'd be constantly trying to kill each other, we would probably still be living in caves in small groups of only your you know, genetic relatives. Kind of be lonely. Let me tell you, do you really want to get it on with a sister? Not me. Not me. Anybody else have any questions? You, sir. Uh, historically, I guess, religion's been kind of an advantage for people. It's been advantageous I mean, as far as our survival. People, that community, uh, not to mention any religions, but, you know, things like that. <laughs> but do you, do you ever feel that being non-religious will, will ever be advantageous for people? As far as proclaiming I'm not religious actually pushes you forward in life. You don't have to put your money in the offer to play. <laughs> well, look, look, I mean, I, I think I mentioned this before where, yeah, I mean, at, the, at a particular time, religion was good because it created a sense of community. But we have communities for everything. I mean, you have communities of Star Trek lovers. You know, you have communities of people who like to collect buttons. I mean, there's tons of things that we do share in common. I think that's the most important thing. I mean, sure, we share things in common by our non-belief, but we share lots of other things in common. And I think we live in a world that's increasingly flat, one where we're able to communicate with one another. One of the reasons I think we're becoming more and more peaceful is because it's getting easier and easier for us to talk to each other. I mean, how often are you spending time online talking to complete strangers, right? I wouldn't be here if, if that wasn't the case. <laughs> Phil contacted me via Facebook. Yeah, look, the social networking allows us to communicate with other people, and as we do that, then we, we eliminate that otherness. And we, we start seeing everybody as part of the general human family, and this is a relatively new thing in, in our history. You know, there, there was, there's a time where if you just had a different skin color or just kill you, you'd be like, you're another, you're an alien. We now understand we're all the same. You know, we descend from the same, uh, you know, hominid. We're just, we are, we, there is not much that is different. I think from individual to individual, you share 99.9% .9 of the same genes that they do. You know, when you talk about the human genome, there is no singular human genome. Every single one of you has a unique one. It's slightly different, but at the same time, the differences are minute. We are all still generally the same. And all of us here are related in some way. Sorry to tell you. <laughs> Perhaps not closely, but still, we are all related. We're just, we, we descend from the same small group of apes. Small group of apes. And you know, that's the title of this speech, Holy Shit, I'm an Ape. The reason I called it that is, again, when I was having those, your panic attacks, I thought about you know, how strange it was that an ape, because that's indeed what we are, would be having those kinds of anxieties, right? But I think that's actually, the fact that we are apes is a pretty amazing thing. You know, it, 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 we didn't need to be special in order to be great. We just are. And that's how I feel about it. I still have to wait, you know, like the jury's out on this. We might just really fuck everything up now. But I see things improving. And I just don't see how religion necessarily fits into that. People can still believe, but I don't think that it's the glue that holds us together anymore at all. I ran across something a few days ago that was humorous that kind of sums up this, this positive outlook I think you're, you're getting to. Is there was a, it, was a, it was a cartoon. Um, God was going in, in, on the unemployment line because he was <laughs> having less and less to do. It's true, we have to push them in the margins. And you know what, if you look at religious extremism, I believe it's because God has been pushed more and more to the margins. And when it has, when it means less to people, for a small fragment of the population, just on the edges, it's going to mean a lot more to them. Because they see the way that we marginalize God. And that, for them, is very scary. Because they believe that everything should be centrally about him, or her, or it. But we keep pushing it away. It, it, it keeps answering fewer and fewer questions. And I think that that's actually something we're going to notice, is that the fringe groups, the fundamentalists, are going to get more and more scared. You know, it, it's a reactionary thing to us coming out 